recent African Union summit adopted a decision requesting the International Criminal Court to refer back to Kenya its cases against Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and Vice President William Ruto. Of the top six wanted people on the list of the court, four are African. Current indictments include Laurent Gbagbo of the Ivory Coast, Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir on five counts of crimes against humanity, and Jean-Pierre Bemba of the Democratic Republic of the Congo for war crimes and crimes against humanity. The Netherlands-based International Criminal Court was created by the Rome Statute of 2002. It prosecutes individuals for genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. It is intended to complement existing national judicial systems and may only exercise its jurisdiction when national courts are unwilling or unable to investigate or prosecute such crimes. Since 2008, the African Union has questioned the transparency and fairness of the court, saying there was a perception of double standard in conformity with the principles of international law. Currently, 122 states are party to the statute of the court, including half the countries in Africa. All right, now let's go to Durban, where we are joined by Ms. Batohi, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure welcoming her to Morning Live. Good morning, and welcome to, firstly, South Africa, and secondly, to Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be back home and wonderful to be on your program. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, how is the ICC responding to the request by the African Union to refer back to the cases of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto to Kenya? Well, the situation in Kenya is that the cases are before the court and we have to allow the legal process to take its course. So the ICC is dealing with its mandate to uh, deal with the cases and um, the, the situation is that, yes, all of our cases are in Africa. We are dealing with eight situations and they are all in Africa. Mm. And, and the court has, in fact, come in for a lot of criticism for the fact that all of our situations are in Africa. But the, the real position is that only two of these cases yeah. were, in fact, initiated by the prosecutor of the court. All the other situations were calls by the African countries or the Security Council for the ICC to get involved in these cases. So it's, it's unfair for the court to be criticized for the fact that all of our cases are in Africa, when in fact only two of them were brought about by the initiative of the prosecutor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you look at, you look at how people refer to, to the ICC, sometimes it's, you know, it's re referred to as the ICC Africa problem. You know, how, how do we get rid of this perception? Well, this, the, the real issue is the fact that I think we all want the same thing whether it's the African Union, uh, whether it's the ordinary people of Africa, whether it's the International Criminal Court, we all want peace in Africa. We all want stability in Africa. We all want a respect for democratic values. We all want justice for the victims, for the millions of victims in Africa. And the reality is that each one of, it, of us can't deal with it on our own. We need to work together the African Union, uh, the people of Africa, civil society, the court, to try to ensure that we do try to end impunity and that we bring justice to the millions of victims in Africa and in other parts of the world. You know, we hear so many people, well, there's so many voices yeah. um, in this debate, but where is the voice of the victims? Mm, mm. And all my life as a prosecutor, I have fought for victims in South Africa, yeah. and, and now I will continue to do that wherever in the world we find victims of horrendous crimes. Yeah. How, how relevant is the ICC in peacetime? I mean, when countries are developing their own justice systems um, and, and want to protect their sovereignty. Well, absolutely. That is the way the Rome Statute system is designed. If countries can deal with these problems, if they can deal with these issues, if they can hold people accountable, if they can bring justice to victims within the national systems, that is perfect. In fact, that is the way the system is designed because the ICC will only step in 
if countries fail to take on their primary responsibility to deal with these crimes in their own countries. All right. I, 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 we're running out of time at such a dramatic rate, and I, and I want to speak to you for an hour. That's the problem. Um, but I have to ask you the question. You've come back to South Africa at a time that I think most South Africans' hearts are very heavy as we sit by and, and we watch our former president, Nelson Mandela, um, in hospital, struggling with his health. Um, you worked with him at around 1995 regarding hit squads in KwaZulu-Natal. You know, tell us about your interactions with him and, and, and of course, your immediate thoughts of, of, of him right now. Um, I had the pleasure, an absolute pleasure, of dealing with President Mandela way back in 1995 when he set up the international, sorry, the investigation task force to look into hit squad activities in my province. And um, I had the opportunity um, to meet with President Mandela in his house in Houghton, together with other members of our team, to brief him on the investigations at the time. And what really struck me was his determination to get down to the bottom of what happened during the apartheid years in terms of the atrocities that were committed. But also what, what really struck me was his humility and his genuine sense of humanity. And I think it taught me that no matter who you are and what job you do in the world, that at the end of the day, you need to remain very grounded and in touch with the people. And I think it was a very, very uh, humbling experience to have met him. And he was the president at the time. Yeah. And, yeah. and I will always treasure that memory. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the program, and I'm so sorry to cut the interview short, but even just to, to have you here and talking to us has been an absolute privilege. Uh, Shamila Batohu is the senior legal advisor to the prosecutor with the ICC. Thank you so much for joining us, and enjoy your stay in South Africa. Thank you very much for Thank having you. me.